Schaeffer from the Worcester branch of the Wayne County Public Library. In today's library kitchen, I'd like to share with you a very simple, delicious dip that you can make for your holiday gatherings. Whether you've got a bunch of friends coming over or you just want a quiet family night at home, this is a really good dip to make. Basically, it's cream cheese with a lot of flavoring. So how can you go wrong? But what we're going to make is a three colored cream cheese dip. One layer will be green with pesto in it. One layer will be white with garlic powder in it. And the top layer will be red with roasted tomatoes worked in. Now I'm not going to use super exact measurements because this is one I like to just throw together. But to start with on the cream cheese, I got two blocks that were eight ounces and just divided it up into thirds. Because I have a somewhat smaller dish than usual, I think that's going to work better for this. You'll want to adjust that for whatever size dish you're using. You could go with three eight ounce blocks, three of the smaller blocks, whatever works for you. So for the first layer, I've got some of my cream cheese and it's still a little bit stiff from the refrigerator, but we'll see if we can get it all worked up. And then I also have probably a tablespoon to two tablespoons of my homemade pesto that I'm going to work in. You can use store-bought, of course. That will work fine. But the idea is we're going to get something green in here. Now you may have noticed with my pesto, what I like to do when I'm making my own is to use an ice cube tray to put the pesto into that to make nice portion sizes that are easy to thaw one by one. Instead of having a whole jar that I need to try and pull out of the freezer and then use up at some point. So there's your handy tip for the day with pesto. As I'm getting this olive oil worked in, this is smoothing out a little bit, so that's good. You want to try and get it worked into all of the cream cheese though. So you got to get it smashed up and <laughs> mashed all together. This is a good dish for taking out your frustrations, isn't it? All right, that's about as good as it's going to get with my arm today. If you've got a food processor, that would probably work even better. But now that I've got it all together, I'm just going to dump it all into my dish. I'm gonna try and get every last bit here. And then I'm just going to smooth it out into a layer. Okay, so as you can see, there's the first layer. It's smoothed out as best I can make it. It's not super green. It's not really bright, bright green. If you wanted it more green, you might try and use a fresher pesto, maybe a little more pesto, but it's still going to taste great, trust me. So we'll set that aside, and then we've got the next round, which is going to be just with garlic powder. So I'm gonna sprinkle in some garlic powder. I like it garlicky, so we're gonna go with that. And then I'm also going to drizzle in some olive oil to help loosen it up and make it a little more spreadable. And we'll do the same thing here and just mix and mix and mix until we're done. Okay, and with the magic of editing, you can see now we have the second layer's cream cheese filling done. So I'm gonna put that into the dish next. The nice thing about it being cream cheese is that you really don't have to chill in between the layers because it's just not gonna move very much when you spread the next layer on top. So that at least is nice. 
even though it is quite the arm workout if you're doing this by hand, you're not spending a lot of time waiting for each layer to set. All right, so there's layers one and two. They're not really clearly delineated just yet, but let's take the rest of our cream cheese and dump it in. And for our final layer, for the red layer, what I have here are cherry tomatoes that were seeded and roasted with olive oil, thyme, salt, and pepper. Um, I don't think this was quite a pint of cherry tomatoes. I'm thinking it was more like half a pint. But then what I did after freezing them was thaw them and puree them with a little more olive oil with my immersion blender at home because I thought that would make it a little bit easier to work into the cream cheese. So we'll add that. So there we have the roasted tomato mixture with the cream cheese. We'll add that one at the very top. Again, I think this would look better if I were able to blend this all in a food processor or if the cream cheese were a little bit colder. Excuse me, warmer. We don't want it any colder than this yet. But it still looks and smells delicious. So there we are, three layers of our cream cheese dip. Very festive looking. If you wanted, you could sprinkle the top maybe with a little bit of chopped parsley or basil just to pop those colors a little more. Otherwise, you can keep this in the fridge, pull it out when you're ready to celebrate with friends and family and have plenty of crackers handy because people are going to dive right in. So that's today's recipe in the library kitchen. I hope you have an excellent time trying this out at home. And in the meantime, eat healthy, be kind, and take care. Bye-bye.